So today I am replacing the hard drive in this Acer laptop. So let's go ahead and get started. Make sure you have the following. Your hard drive, a USB or CD-ROM with the Windows 10 ISO already on it, a screwdriver set, and a way to back up all and transfer all of your data. The first step is to back up or transfer your data. You can save all of your data to an external hard drive or even use a USB thumb drive if you don't need that much data saved to it or have a really large thumb drive. You can also back up your data to a cloud service such as OneDrive, Google Drive, or even Dropbox. You can also back up your data to another computer that is on the same network. I personally back up to my home server that I made. Be sure to check out those videos in that playlist. After backing up your data, make sure that you have a copy of the correct version of Windows 10 or whatever operating system that you're choosing to use on your new hard drive. Next, if possible, remove the battery prior to opening up the computer. Most new laptops do not allow for that possibility, so you may need to wait to remove the battery until you get the whole back off. So next you'll want to remove the cover. In my case, I've got three screws here. Acer made this one perfectly easy here. I only have to pull off a small portion to expose the hard drive and the RAM slots. Once you have access to your hard drive, you can carefully remove it. Some companies make an anti-static mat that I would suggest you have when you are working on the internals of a computer. Helps keep from frying any of the motherboard or damaging any other internals. So I'm going to carefully slide out. Angle it up and pull out. So once you have the new hard drive installed, you can go ahead and replace the battery if you had to pull it out, as well as putting the cover back on. So next up, we need to go ahead and plug in the USB thumb drive with the Windows 10 operating system on it, and power on the computer. So at this point, what you'll want to do is follow all the prompts for installing this version of Windows 10. I'm going to make sure it's on the proper drive here. And it'll start installing for you. So on some devices, it'll go ahead and try turning on Cortana to help walk you through setting up your new Windows 10 operating system. I actually shut that off by going down here to the microphone in the bottom left, shutting it off, and then I'm going to set it up manually on my own. So now that you have Windows 10 successfully installed, you should have an admin account ready to go right off the bat. I was able to set mine up with a Microsoft account and you can do that too if you have one. Otherwise, you can also create a local user account. If you want to create additional users, you just go into system settings and you can mess around with other users, whether they're local users or uh, Microsoft account users. So now that you have Windows 10 installed correctly and you have your user account created, you can start migrating all of your files over from your backup choice from step one. You can also start adding other users, installing programs, and so on and so forth, and treat it as a normal computer because that is what it is. Something that I do suggest is to make sure that you go to your manufacturer's website and make sure that your drivers are all up to date. Sometimes Windows 10 will install without updated drivers and that is something that is typically specific to 
your manufacturer of whether it's a webcam or certain uh, monitors and so on and so forth. So make sure all that's up to date. And also just a quick note about this hard drive swap. I swapped a one terabyte spinning drive with a 500 gig solid state drive. Even though I cut the storage in half, I upgraded to a faster and more reliable hard, hard drive. Cutting down your local storage isn't necessarily a bad thing. I wouldn't suggest it if you're going from one terabyte to 120 gigs or even a terabyte to 240 gigs. But going to 500 gigs isn't bad, especially if you aren't using it all. For example, the user of this Acer was only using 70 gigs of their hard drive space, so they, could, they didn't necessarily need the full terabyte. Also, if you have any access to servers or cloud storage, you can use some of that rather than going and installing a huge hard drive on your computer. So just keep that in mind whenever you are replacing your hard drives. Don't forget to watch my video about building the home server because you might be able to do that and back up your data to it. Also, watch the video I did about hard drives. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe.